Welcome to the demonstration of the new QuickStats function. This demonstration will show you how to use the QuickStats function within any IRI job script to auto-generate a linear regression analysis report in PDF format when it's past numeric X and Y values. The function is part of the IRI Veracity platform and is used within the IRI workbench, built on top of Eclipse. Let's get started. So the scenario we'll be looking at for a demonstration today is a vending company that wants to determine whether how much they put in their machines makes any difference as to how much is sold. So if there's more in the machines, do they sell more or less, or is there no correlation at all? So on the left you see the data set we're going to start with, and in the middle you can see the auto-generated report that we have. First I'll talk about the data set. It's comma-separated values, five columns across. The first column is the vending machine identification number. The second column is the maximum capacity, how many units can fit in that machine. The third column will be the number of units in the machines, and that will be our X value. And the fourth column will be our Y value. This is the number of units sold from the machine and the last value is the month 12. So this is in December, there were 442 units and 82 were sold. And we have a thousand data points. So let's take a look at the report. It contains a title as you've entered into the function with the appended date and time, which is also the file name given automatically. It provides a graph of the XY value points and a calculated linear regression line, essentially a best fit line for those data points. It contains X and Y axis labels as entered into the function as you'll see. It comes with an equation for the linear regression line. So if you do this consistently over time you can see how this line is going to be changing. It comes with an R squared value to help you gauge how well this line fits your data. So this is given in a decimal percentage, so 0.75 is 75% correlation. Also provided for the X and Y values are the number of observations, which should be the same, the average value for X and Y, the standard deviation of X and Y, and corresponding confidence limits calculated with a chi-squared test using the Boost C++ library. For the particular data set we'll be analyzing today, the standard deviation and the corresponding confidence limits aren't going to be beneficial. But in instances of relatively fixed X or Y values, average dispersion measurements could prove useful. So let's open up the IRI workbench. We're going to create a new project. IRI project. We'll call it IRI stats. There's no wizard for using this function at this time, so you can either create a script using a wizard and then input the function into it, or write the script using the function yourself. Inside of our project folder, we're going to put our data set, and then also an example script. These will both be provided with the blog online. So here are our data points within the IRI workbench, our five comma separated values, a uh, thousand data points, and then here's our script we'll be using. Very simple. We take the in comma separated value data sheet, we define our two fields, source X and source Y data, and that's the third and fourth columns. We report and in the out file we create a field and we set our function equal to some name. It doesn't matter what you call it there. Within our QuickStats function we pass the X data and the Y data and then we give it our title or file name, unit inventory versus sales and then we're going to do our X axis as the inventory units and then our Y axis as units sold. So you can see the end there. Just single line to auto-generate the report. You simply run the script. And here's our PDF. 
At the top we have our title, which is also the file name, unit inventory versus sales. On the x-axis we have inventory units. On the y-axis is the sold units. So on our graph itself we have our data points, a thousand data points, and then we have our linear regression line as calculated. Clearly you can see some correlation there, but let's look at the numbers. Here's our equation to the line, and then to help us determine how well this is fitting, we've got our R squared value. That's given as a decimal percentage, so roughly 75% correlation. Um, that gives us a little confidence, but just visually we can see that the more units that we have in, on average, the more units are sold. So that's telling us to fill our machines up because we're going to sell more. So X and Y observations are the same number. And for this specific analysis, we aren't too worried about the average values of X and Y or standard deviation. A possible secondary analysis would be to determine if filling the machines up with more units causes any food or toy spoilage. And if so, how does that spoilage loss compare to the unit sales gains from filling the machines up higher in the first place? So you could see how running several reports similar to this, a company could come up with a best fill level to maximize their sales while minimizing losses. The quick stats function is not yet included within the veracity graphical job wizard. So there are several steps you need to take initially, just one time, to get the function to work. I'll talk about these steps in the blog article and provide all needed files, but one of the steps is to create this repo project folder and place inside of it repo.reportdesign. Now when the function is used within a cosort sort CL script, which is Veracity's primary data manipulation program, it takes in the X and Y data values, does the regression analysis, and comes down here and grabs this repo.reportdesign, which is essentially a template. It injects the analysis results into it and then generates a PDF report using the free BERT reporting engine that's native to Eclipse. Because the IRI workbench is also built on Eclipse, we can open this report design file within. We'll double click. Now we do all this work in the background, so if the generic report with how it's made is acceptable and gets you what you want, then you have to do nothing with this file. But with how this process works, what it allows you to do is if you want you could alter this repo.reportdesign file prior to running the function to get the report to look differently if you want to customize it in some way, adding titles or pictures. I'll quickly show you how to add images, titles, and use our unique identifiers within the template. Say this report is going to go to someone in management and you want it to look a little more customized, uh, specific to the company. So these identifiers probably don't make too much sense to you, but they're what we use to inject your data into the report during generation. So this file, one, one file, that's where your title is going to go to your chart. So what you input into your function will show up right here. And the same with this y-axis and the x-axis and these x calculations and y calculations. So if you leave those identifiers intact or wherever you place those, you will get the data as it's injected. So if you look at it next to the finished report, you can see that that's where the name that you input into your function went with the appended date and time. And then your sold units showed up in the y-axis instead of that. So you kind of see how that works. All this data here, a linear regression and the x source data, that's all in this x calcs. And then the y calcs is the other side. If you want those, you can leave them. If you don't need those parts of the report, you could remove them, or you could move them around somewhere too. So I'll just show you very quickly. To demonstrate, we'll place an image on and add a title. Right now we've got this file 11 file as the chart title. There it is right there. We'll take that out, remove that, because that's just to the chart itself. That's not a title to the page, that's just a title to the chart. 
So we'll remove that and we'll drop this chart size down. We'll go ahead and add a title. Let's go ahead and add a header. Now here under document, we'll go ahead and use our unique identifier. Okay, we've got our header, and where this file 11 file is, we're going to see our title pop up. Now let's add an image. Let's embed it. And we'll have to change a couple properties to get this to work. We're just going to run our function to see what the new layout is. And there's our PDF. So there's the new one. Let's get the old PDF in. So here's our original, and here's our modified version. So you can see how you could use the BERT report design features to customize your report prior to running. So if you're going to run these consistently, you may want to take a little time at the beginning to get it to look exactly how you'd like. As you can see at the top, our file 11 file has been replaced with the actual title with date and time appended. And we've uh, moved things around, we changed the size of the chart, we removed the title from the chart, uh, we input an image. If you have any suggestions for future numeric or non-numeric analytic functionality within Veracity, please leave a comment or email veracity at iri.com. Thank you again for watching this video on the new report auto-generating quick stats function. For more information about the Veracity platform on the IRI Workbench or our other software products, visit iri.com.